All right, so in this example, we're gonna look at uh, just a, a creative way to use the tools, use Storyline just a little bit differently. And this is, it kind of goes back to something when folks frequently will send me their projects and they'll say, hey, you know, can you look at my, my portfolio? Can you tell me, am I an advanced user? Or how skilled am I? Or, you know, what, what, what do you think of my projects? And a lot of times they're asking about things like, you know, their use of variables or maybe even JavaScript, which obviously are, they're obviously advanced skills. But a lot of times I like to look at advanced use of Storyline as uh, someone who really has such a, a deep understanding of the tools that they actually can solve problems that the tool wasn't even even meant to do, or they're they're using the tool in a way to solve a problem that maybe there isn't a direct feature for. So in this example, we're gonna look at uh, really creative use of button sets to simulate multiple quiz questions on a single slide. So you probably already know that's, that's not possible. If you're using uh, graded questions on a, uh, a slide, you, you can only have one question per slide. So let me show you the example, and then we'll just we'll do a quick build and storyline. Uh, it's, it's really simple, but it's just one of those uh, examples of uh, just a, a, a creative use of the tool far beyond what what uh, it was designed to do. So let's do this. In this first example, this was submitted by Diane Ma Myers. It's an older example, but here's what it is. You, it, at first glance, it looks like there are four separate multiple choice questions here on the slide. So we have this first one. Uh, what percentage of learners are motivated by incentives and we just make a choice and we get feedback there not sure why the browser just shifted on that one uh, make another choice choice and then final choice and we click submit now i didn't get it right but here's what's really neat this is a graded question everything on the slide is can be tracked and reported to the lms we try to think well how did how did they create those multiple uh, different quizzes right there well, let me show you how it works. It's actually really simple. It's just uh, another one of those examples of, of, of using the tools in a little deeper way. So what I have starting out here is a slide. If I go all the way down here to the bottom, I've got my, my chat boxes right here. I can turn those off. Those are just used to help visually group each of these, these ovals. So we haven't made an interaction out of this. We just have three sets of ovals and we'll just use these as the kind of the basis for the interaction. So I'll turn the chat boxes back on just so we have that visual grouping. So we want to use a graded question, a free form question. And the way we can do that is by using the convert to free form. So I'm going to come up here to my insert tab and we just choose convert to free form. Now in this case, because we want to simulate multiple questions, we'll use the multiple select or the pick mini call it a pick mini, but essentially it's like a visual, it's like a visual multiple select question. You can have more than one correct answer. All right, click OK. And that's going to take us here to form view. And then what we would do is just select our, our choices here. What I want to do real quick is pop back into my, my slide view real quick. And I just want to mark a couple of these just visually so I know which ones I want to be correct. I'm just going to pick these uh, completely at random. So we'll say this one will be correct. I uh, will make the first one here. And then we'll make the last one there, right? So I'm just I'm just doing this to indicate which of these choices that I want to uh, indicate as the correct choice. Go back over here to form view, and then we'll just wire up our interaction. So I'll just go, I guess, top to bottom. So I'm just going to go three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two, one for all the choices. So as I do each select each of these, you can see that they're being removed from the list. So question two, question two. And then a couple more, I might have to scroll, scroll down. And you can see, right, as, as each time I selected one, they're, they're missing from the list. All right, so for question one, it looks like we are using the second choice. So question one, choice two, and we just mark that as the correct choice. Uh, looking over here, I can see choice one for question two is correct. And then question three, choice three. Oh, you know what? All right. I could have just looked for the X. That would have been a lot easier, right? The X would tell me. Anyway, um, those are the correct choices. I'm going to do this. I'm going to pop back into slide view here real quick, and let's preview our interaction. You can see by converting it, Storyline automatically added the correct and incorrect layers for us. So we'll preview this. Uh, heads up, it's not going to work. <laughs> it's going to work, but uh, we still have to make one last change to it to get this to do what we want it to do. So you can see which ones the correct choices are. But the way it's currently set up, it's a multiple select. Every one of these options can be selected. And that's not what we want. We only want one option. Hey, where's my, there's my selected state. We only want one option from each of these to be selected. 
And the way we do that is with a built-in feature that's been around since uh, version one, and that's a button set. So the way we work with button sets is we select the objects, and with those objects selected, we're gonna right click, come down here to button set. Now typically we would just select button set one. Most commonly button sets are used, just you only have one set on the slide, so you can just use this one. But we have three, and so what I'm gonna do is create new set so I can give these a, 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 a consistent naming structure. So I'll say new set, and we'll just say question one. And there's no visual change to the objects, but if I ever right click any, you know, any one of these or all of them, you'll see it's part of now question, uh, question one for the button set. All right, now all I need to do is do it for the remaining objects. Again, I'm only gonna select the objects that I want for each specific chat box or question set. So new set and question two, and then last one, question three. All right. Here we go, question three, and this should take care of it. Now if I preview this, what the button set is doing is setting this up so that only one object within the button set can be selected at a time. So you don't need a bunch of triggers to turn each of the other objects off. Uh, it's all handled automatically behind the scenes with Storyline. So again, I select any one of these. You can see they all toggle, and I can have my correct choice, correct choice, and I'll just click each of these to double check. There we go, and there's my option. So that's how you can simulate multiple multiple quiz questions on a single slide. We click Submit, and this is a graded question, which means the results could be submitted to the LMS. All right, well, that's all there is to it. Button sets are one of the greatest features in Storyline. Typically, you only see one button set per slide, one button set I uh, use at a time, but you can have multiple when you want to create those groupings where you have multiple groups where uh, an object per group is the can only be selected at one time. All right, hope you enjoyed that tip.